Hello, this is Wolf Outdoor Review here today, and I'm going to be doing a review of the PCU Protective Combat Uniform um, Level 5 Soft Shell Trousers. These are made by Patagonia. These are essentially a uh, Special Forces Navy SEAL Army Ranger specialty group um, protective unit. It's essentially the extended cold weather clothing system Generation 2. Or, and it's kind of a private purchase type of thing, or if it's a purchase at all, if, if you weren't issued them or whatever. So, there's a few differences between this and the ECWCS. One is colors, obviously. Um, most of this uh, system is either black or gray, or brown. Whereas the ECWCS system varies depending on which generation, or I guess, version you got. You have the UCP version and the... Um, OCP version, so you go from desert tan to coyote brown, or this weird sage, or weird tan color, so, but this was the, uh, this is alpha gray color, so the whole, most of the system was now for gray, and if you want more information on what, what, all this stuff, you can look online, just look up PCU, Protective Combat Uniform Patagonia. There's official videos where they go over the who created this and all that. I'm just doing a review of the uh, pockets, features, specs, and stuff. This purse particular pair is a size small regular, which is, I think, waist size 27 or 26 to 32 or 31, somewhere in there, um, depending on uh, your personal size. I've, I'm 32, size 32 waist, and it fits me kind of snugly although if you do buy them I recommend that you uh, have a little bit of space since they have suspenders for and belt loops for a reason um, is, believe it or not for these type of pants if you are promoting heat movement the worst thing you can do apparently is um, cinch your waist down and have that really like put on a belt and cinch it down hard I think the point of the suspenders is so that it's loose fitting and you can, air can travel up and down your stomach and groin to your stomach and you have more, less divide line between cold and hot up and down. There's some science behind that. If you have any information on that, I'd love to hear about it. Anyway, like I said, this is Alpha Gray PCU Patagonia Level 5 Trousers, size small regular. Um, if you want more information on the history of this, there's a lot of articles you can look at. CIE Hub, which is a, a website that goes over nomenclature and military pamphlets about certain military equipment. They're always useful resource. But yeah, so uh, as you can see, we'll go over. I'll point out the obvious now, and then I'll dive into it first, or dive into it from there. So starting out, each side has cargo pockets with a zipper. That's kind of weird compared to what we normally use to with the Velcro. Every other one's Velcro, it seems. So I, I can't think of many trousers that have zippered cargo pockets that are military-issued, if any. Most of them are buttons or Velcro or just gravity flaps. So that's a nice addition because in the winter, it's kind of hard to use buttons with your gloves on or and then velcro gets covered in snow and the tall grasses and stuff so the zippers are definitely useful um when it comes to the pants here they have uh, these nice hemmed drainage pockets so you can technically walk through a river and um what i found is you can take a standard ziploc bag and use them as essentially dry bags for your cargo pockets. So, let me zoom out and I'll show you that. So, I'll pause the video and I'll be back. Alright, I'm back. And here we have just a standard great value sandwich bag. And as you can see, the fit's reasonably the same. Of course, you could size that up to a quart bag if you wanted. Which I'll go grab one of those. Alright, I'm back. So, um... We'll just go over this sizing just for your convenience. This is their uh, six and a half by seven inch bags. So, and then the actual pockets are 
considered about seven and a half by eight and or seven and three fourths. So that's your pocket dimensions and um, not a waterproof zipper, but and then this is the type of bag I was thinking of mainly. So that should cover any possible thing you'd need. Although you'd have a little bit extra here. But that covers the entirety of the pocket, pretty much. And I suppose you could always, like, fold it a little bit, so... Yeah. These are considered... Eight inch by... Seven one fourth. So, those that's kind of like a good pocket design. And like I said, you've got f I believe three grommet holes. And what's cool here is that these this is considered pleated in the four direction. So this doesn't just sag down. It's got some attachment here, and then the side flutters open. So you have some billowing effect. But as you walk forward. I think, yes, forward would be that way, so as you walk forward, you have a pleat there to stop it from bagging on the side there, and you can fit quite a bit in here, I'd say, I'll just grab a random, here's the red bed sheet, and I'll see if that fits. Just a standard queen size sheet. Maybe not. Yeah, no. Okay. Well, well, let's see what else. Okay, here's a standard t shirt, I guess. Looks like you could fit about two t-shirts in here. And as you can see, yeah, it's pleated there, and that kind of streamlines it. But yeah, it'll, you can hold a lot in here. Like, one side has your hat and gloves, the other side uh, part of an MRE or something, I don't know. And I'll do a zoom in here on the zipper. See, it's got this annoying stuff here, which I'd probably end up replacing at some point with, uh, that micro paracord, they have like the full sized and then the micro size. It's like fishing in between fishing line and post. No, actually, yeah, it's the size of spaghetti, about that thickness. And it's like made out of silk. It's, it's like very small and it looks tubular. Kind of like this part of it's got this like nice finish on it. So it's I don't know. Yeah, it's really nice. But yeah. This is considered one t-shirt. Plenty of room. Um, you do have to worry about a little bit of cut problems, which is surprising from Patagonia. But it is the early generation, so, you know. Most commercial pants, they do some sort of some like this, at least. Maybe that used to be on this, I don't know. But yeah, so... And it's got yeah, some weird, I guess, like the tag material and the uniforms stuff to reinforce the uh, grommet holes. Yeah, this is, yeah, very, uh, essentially a uh, soft shell material, so, yeah, those are really nice. And when you're done, you just zip it back up. Right, moving on. So that was the, uh, we'll just assume that that was the sa uh, same size cargo pocket on the other side. But yes, you have two cargo pockets. Um, when you're wearing them, uh, this is how you wear them. So you have the zipper that's closed on the left, and it opens on the right. So you can, like, draw your hand down and open. And I believe it's mirrored on the other side. Yes, it's mirrored on this side as well. 
some zippers or they just print the same thing. So this would be considered open going this way because it's the same. But put on here and then flipped. It ends up being like that. So yeah, both these are mirrored open, which is a nice feature. Same thing here. You get your pleated forward three drain holes and yeah, so that's the cargo pockets, and I went over the measurements. Next up is the hand warming pocket slash, I don't know, wallet ID thing. These are nice because they've got this ventilation stuff, which could be considered nice or not, depending on what you use. If you're like, freezing in winter, maybe not, but I don't know. The only other annoying thing I could see is I tend to pick up random little things like safety pins and whatever and I know this is kind of thin holes but still it just seems like you'd lose or like uh, what is it some sort of like screw or nail or whatever you know some people carry around tiny little things oh no my diamond or my little stud earring or whatever something tiny you might lose in here so that's my only concern it's like you see most commercial pockets or the standard material and you, there's like a zero percent chance you can lose anything out the bottom you're more likely to lose out the hand side pocket but there's that risk with these and you also have to be careful what you put in here like you couldn't put a pocket knife in this pocket i wouldn't because you you know you're like violently attacking the material with the sharp objects and this seems kind of flimsy but for you know, a hand warmer pocket or some random object, I would think it would be good. But yeah, so it's just the lower half that's that. And these holes look to be about... Maybe... An eighth. So... Reasonably big or smallish, and yeah, this seems like also yeah you have to kind of a little bit worry about um this uh, the threading, but other than that, it looks pretty nice. And yeah, so both sides have hand warming pockets here. As wearing them, you these are pretty deep. I could fit my whole arm in here. And we'll flip it inside out, and I'll give you a measurement for that. Just so you, this is just a disclaimer again. This is size small regular. I would assume as your sizing goes up, everything else follows suit. I may be wrong, but it would make sense if you're extra large pants. They would have bigger cargo pockets and stuff. So take these measurements with a grain of salt. And. And then we'll go over what that just did in a minute. So, all right, here we go. We've got mm, six and three fourths by ten and three eighths. And you can kind of go up as well with the pocket. You have a few, but yeah, really deep pockets, and yeah, the bottom part, I guess, is for, you theoretically could put socks in your pants and dry them, or maybe uh, for, like, water draining into your pockets, or I have no clue why they have this. I like the material, but yeah, I'd assume the only thing I can assume is it's for venting, and then you, like, just do this in your pocket if you're getting a little too hot, better than reaching down the front of your pants, you just kind of like open it, like, I don't know, that would kind of be weird, but, you know, hold, put your hand, make a tunnel with your hands, get some air in there, I would assume it's that or smell or something, but, yeah, those are, each side's probably the same measurements, but yeah, you've got two pockets there, and then on each side, as you just saw, you've got these weird things, it's like not a complete full zip off sides you've got half zip down to the cargo pocket and then underneath the cargo pocket you finish zipper another zipper so you can put this over over your jeans or whatever that's why i bought them as uh, 
like hiking pants if the weather turns bad you can wear them so yeah um, as you can see here that's what this standardly looks like and what's nice is these kind of close themselves when you're using them since the uh, suspenders are at a 45 degree and this goes around your back so you're always putting pressure to keep them closed unless you don't need them closed and you can take off suspenders for all of them and yeah and I guess we'll go over this while we're here you've got two buttons here which, which I don't know how I, how I feel about this I mean it's probably easier than one of those stupid rivet buttons but I don't know this could be cool if you have to route cables or something through there or whatever but and at least then you have a confirmation click like you have your shirt covering it you're like there I've buttoned the first one so you have some confirmation um, what's nice is you've got a two-way zipper so if you have to go to the bathroom it's not you don't have to go down you can go up as well and then you know, you can go up or down, depending on which way you want. So, yeah. And then the measurement on this. Remember everything here. Just a warning is uh, size small regular. So, like I said, I'm almost certain if you size something up, you gain more. Circumference, length, even pocket size. So, do understand that. And then... In total of usable space, you're looking at about. We'll go. Got about five and three fourths inches worth of usable zipper space, and then you've got a total fly size of about eight and three fourths. So you got plenty of fly to work with, and then, which because it is kind of hard if these are form-fitting pants and you don't want to do undo the side zippers. If by unzipping them you gain a lot of space to then form-fit them back, because you're like right on that 32 waist size. Yeah, you're gonna have to use everything you can to make sure these fit well. So yeah, so that is the fly front zipper. If you have any comments, questions, concerns about these, um, please leave a comment, I'll also be doing another review later about these, um, different size of course, I'm probably going to sell these um, and buy a different medium size and that, so I'll do a review of that as well. For me personally, if you own a pair and you want a good system, a, measure, uh, a good way to attach the uh, suspenders, what I recommend is um, you have your pleat here and your this type this one there's one that's just like this a long piece that goes in the back I recommend but yeah for the front one what I recommend is you have your this is also what m all the uh, suspender loops look like so if you want to make your own like these are one inch webbings you could maybe sew your own suspenders or use outdoor research suspenders or whatever and your opening is about one and a half inches at its widest. So you've got a little bit of play left and right. But what I recommend is coming in from the bottom with the Velcro sides up. Keep go. You'd think, oh no, you'd keep going until you hit this. You want to make sure your buckle is facing up. And then what I do is go over and then come back down. Like so. And then close it. That essentially uses up a lot of your suspender material so you're not saggy all the time. And then when you want to adjust it, you grab the bottom and pull. And everything looks neat and tidy, and all your adjustments are on the inside. And then you could theoretically, if you're still scared about it, you could use a web, one of those elastic web keepers from the backpacks which they're on all packs and pouches, so you could grab one of those or some sort of tape. And then, yeah, so that's how I recommend that. Then for the back, we'll just go over suspenders now while I'm thinking of it. 
Here's what the back looks like. You've got this 45 degree grommet on the corner of these uh, side zip downs. They are approximately one and a half inches as well. Of course, they're weird because they go out like this and this, and then they curve around. So when you flatten them, they have 45 degree folds. Fold, so. Yeah, there's that. So with this, you wanna make sure that you hold them out, out your things, and when anything, if you do anything, you kinda wanna make sure you pretend like you're wearing them and then see where they naturally go. So for me, like that you have an outside thing that keeps that, the uh, suspenders together. For these particular pair, that's three inches, just for your measurement. So then you would follow the path like this, and that's where I would attach. And so here, what I do is I go in, like so. And here's a good look at rights meaning by 45. And most of the uh, sewing I'll say on this is pretty well done. Everything's like triple sewed. You, you're probably worse off buying like uh, REI pants. So these are really high quality. Yeah, you'll go in like that. Then fold it in half. So, that's it detached. And when it's on your body, it pulls like this, keeping this part closed. And you can adjust it if your waist's bigger or smaller. So that's why you have a little bit of give on your waist size. They claim it's 2731, but I think if you adjust these a tiny bit, which you will have to deal with a little scratching on your underwear or whatever, but... I think you could pull this off with 32 waist, 30. and then for this particular pair of regulars, these are 32 inseam as well. So, we went over the um, suspenders just now, and then moving on to the side. Uh, belt, belt, we'll do belts now, I guess. Okay, when you're looking at your belt size, you're looking at about fusible space, you got about, we'll just say 2 and 1 8, just to be safe. So, yeah, you could fit a 2 and one eight inch belt, I would assume. Yeah, and that looks about right. So, you know, if you have a belt that's 2 and one eight inches. Here's a standard combat belt. This is 1 and 3 fourths. So, this is your standard military rigger belt. We'll just go with this. There's a here guarantee, so maybe it's more like two inches, but you know, if you have a military belt, it will fit perfectly in these. Okay, in case you want to know what this is. Yeah. This is just, yeah, your standard rigger belt. I wish I could just focus on it, but anyway, yeah, standard rigger belt. I don't want to drag this on. I'm sorry for long videos in the past, but. So, I'm trying to get everything that people want to know about it. All right, to the side here. So, you can either adjust, do this secret tactic while you have them off, or while they're on. So, if they're on, it would just be uh, loosen the takeoff or loosen the suspenders, and you can adjust how you need them. This could be donning or doffing. And then, for my particular pair, you've got about two and one-fourth inches of Velcro to play with on the uh, fem female side, I guess, and uh, one and three-fourth inches of that on the male side. So you can, if you're thinner waist, you can adjust thinner. If you're thicker, you can adjust thicker. Um, they also have this very, very basic give on these pants. So you also have an additional scrunchness. So, yeah, if you wanted to, you could probably wear these down to like 10 waist size of a toddler I think these are the most adjustable so yeah you could easily probably pull these off at waist size 20 with the suspenders you'll have a lot of give but you'll have the suspenders so 
if your waist size is below 32 at all, I guarantee these will fit you. If you, As long as you're 32 in seam, your waist size doesn't matter for the small regulars. But yeah, um, you've got this here. The, this is a, a one zipper only, so you can't really zip up and then go under your underpants. You could, if you do this, it's like if, since these are considered overpants, uh, this is both a uh, donning and doffing thing and just accessing the pocket underneath. So your jeans, pants, pockets, or whatever. You can access pockets or vent or, yeah, put on or off. So. It's got a nice fold over here so you don't get cut by that metal. And same zipper, I, th I would assume it's YKK, I can't see. Um, these are kind of hard to move. But, yeah, I'd assume YKK. Um, yep, yeah, so. It's got a pleated bottom down here. So, you know, these, the flap doesn't flap around. And then we'll just uh, attach this. Alright, so now we'll sleep it open. If you're look, and then um, this is approximate waist size for small regular. If you're look, I would ass just assume that at your bare minimum, for those who have extra large, large, medium, whatever, I would assume these measurements are your bare minimum, because everything just goes up from there. You know, if they're long, unless you have short pants, small, short, whatever then things might be different with everything. But for regular sizing, this is your bare minimum. So if my measurements would be your safeguard. So if you're like, I don't know if I should be able to, or what size this zipper is, this, this is gonna be your worst case scenario size zipper. So it would just go up from there if it did. So, you know, you could say, can I fit a gun in here? Whatever you're thinking. So, yeah, these are your, this is your worst case measurement. So, measurement wise with the zipper, you are looking at about eight inches of play on both sides, I would assume. Same, so eight inches of play. And then, yeah, so we went over the uh, both sides. Same thing here on this side. So, singular zipper, probably eight inches. Um, yeah. So there, we went over all the features here. Oh, I guess I'll give you what I can on the tag. This is how you know it's the real deal. It has the Patagonia and then a, this. And you can kind of read this. Level 5 something. Pants Gen 2. And let's see. This right here used to say small regular. But I'll try to find a photo online of one that's in good condition and just copy over the information. So you'll have it in the description. Uh, there's also a P8 if that helps anyone. But yeah, it's Patagonia and a green tag. That's how you know that it's real. They also make these in ORC, which is not outdoor research, it's some industries company. So. There's multiple different versions of this. I would never buy these new. There's some I've looked just as a joke, kind of, and to see what there is. And there's Chinese copies of these selling for the same price as the real deal. So if it doesn't have these tags on it, I wouldn't buy it. There's like special ops brands, whatever, and it's some Chinese ring ting. So if you look on eBay at PCU Pants, you'll find brand new listings or some Chinese copy. But yeah, the real deal is going to cost you a couple hundred, unless you buy a ripped up pair. I, th I was looking to up the size on mine, because I bought my true two, true size, which is 32 waist, and these fit like pants, but then when I researched for this video, it turns out that you want to buy them a little bit higher than your waist size, so that they have your airflow in mind, and they're considered over pants, so you've got to calculate in your thickest pair of jeans as an additional circumference that will probably give you maybe an inch additional on the waist so 
and, and you just you want them to fit lightly and why else would they give you suspenders if they weren't supposed to fall down all the time if you didn't need the suspenders so I recommend sizing up to the next available size so you can fit them over everything and then there's like the uh, I'll do some more reviews of pants later but yeah you can see all the different pants like your combat pants your worst case you may have to put them over your level ones twos and combat trousers so you know you, those that just adds up to probably that much in total on top of the waist so yeah all right so moving on we've got we went over the belt loops and all that um here's one more look at how these work so this is on this you would wear this would be going up the side of your back your armpit would be up here and it would just be going up the side of your back so if you're you shrug them off your shoulders then you can take that and adjust it for your waist size or you can unzip them down on both sides and pee or go to the bathroom or whatever or take them off put them on so that's kind of why this velcros here and they aren't just sewn at the top it's how it aids on putting them on and if you're not doing that and you've already sized them up pretty good you could put the suspenders on leave them on oh my phone's ringing or whatever and then you can zip this and this becomes a pass-through pocket to your jeans or what a combat pants underneath and i think you could probably pull off going to your cargo pockets with the opening size to your combat cargo pockets and then as i'll go over the other ones later but yeah so that's the the uh, side zippers so they're on each side about from waist down to lower hip or eight inches down from your waist all right we went over the cargo pockets um, um, let's see here uh, I'd say that um, also here on your kneecaps you've got about I think three or f two or three layers of material so they're technically considered reinforced knees so yeah I'd say that you could probably use these although I wouldn't be kneeling on sharp objects I'd still wear knee pads if you're going combat with them but yeah if you're doing basic necessities tying your shoes and need to kneel down they're double reinforced knees and yeah I think that's all no 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 actually the seats reinforced too so when you sit down or this is considered two layer material and then I believe it switches back to one when it, yep then it switches to one the rest of the trousers so your seat bomb area and knees caps are both double reinforced fabric so Okay, moving on down. Um, this would be considered your probably your kneecap. They have these donning and doffing zippers. So, as you saw earlier, here's your continuation. You've got your eight inches down cargo pocket, a little bit of space, and then your zipper starts up again. These do not connect. That's just a fair warning. They make some that do. There's a uh, Polar Tech fleece bib you can buy that just zip off sides or the level 7 pants but have completely zip offs so you can put them on and off without taking your boots off at all or putting them in the ground so these are not that you will have to put your f f boots through the material to this part you so yeah um, I'll give you a measurement also so you've got 8 inches up here if I remember and then for the pocket size so from the end of the pocket here to the beginning of the new one you've got 13 inches of space between the end of this pocket and the start of this one and then we, you went over the pocket which was seven and three fourths and then a gap space you look you have about four inches of gap space that it's not being used moving down to your zipper you've got about 17 inches if you want to be conservative maybe 16 and a half inches of total zipper space here um, none of these zippers are like that waterproof material they're all mm, kind of cheapish but they're nice so i like them um you've got your same cleated material here so it covers them 
Um, these are single way, so you can't, unless you uh, decide to zip it up all the way and then use your button, you know, you could do that and then just have a venting thing. But yes, this is a one-way zipper. The only one that isn't is the fly. So all the rest are like that. And yes, if I were to recommend, if you do buy these, I would replace all these with the uh, pasta size um, paracord. I think that would be look better. And you could probably buy it in gray, and that would probably look more streamlined. Because, yeah, these fall off all the time. I have to retie them. And they'll just look nicer, I think. So, and then, but yeah, getting back to this, okay, you can, this is where you would unzip it to help aid in putting them over like your bunny boots or combat boots without taking your boots off. Um, and there's a good look at your double insulated uh, kneecap, double reinforced kneecap. So uh, moving on down, you've got this kind of waterproof cinchy material so this is kind of like a non-slip stuff for leather it probably keeps it in that position where you have them these are considered a uh, stirrup cinch combo so you there's multiple things you could do here um so you could either wear these underneath your boots where your foot goes like or this is like your ankle going down you can either do this underneath your boots and this would be the bottom of your shoe or you can pull them to the side and it just goes around the ankle so these are considered stirrups or just cinches see cinches which hold the pants around your ankle or stirrups where after you put them on you put these over the bottom of your boots and they're considered gaiters or wind protection or like riding a bike or skiing or whatever you're doing these wouldn't fly up and get caught in gears, crevices, tank parts, whatever. So you can do that. Um, and this is just a standard, I would assume that, yeah, the same material, only smaller as your mill spec stuff. Same color on the outside. This is your uh, military tarp. I'll do a review of this later. But, yeah, so... This is, yeah, some bungee material. This has a lot of give, so if you're thicker, if you have an ankle holster, you could probably accommodate this to fit it. And I think that's where these pants would be good, like a private security job. You could always conspicuously leave this pocket open or kind of a little bit low, and then have an ankle holster with whatever you want on it, and then unzip and grab and still have them on your pants. Because you're going for your standard pair of these are just, I don't even know some just standard tech pants you have to roll it up and then do whatever whatever you decide but yeah with those you can just zip up and grab so I don't know. there's an option for like, yeah private security military whatever so I think these pants are definitely still prevalent today all right so, as you can see here, you've got yet yeah, your bungee material. It's really high quality um, cuff here. A lot of pants fail at the cuff. Let's see. The bad ones I'm wearing, or these cheapish ones I'm wearing now, they just did a fold over. There's no barrel lock. Hell, I. Yeah, they just did a very cheap fold over and so job. So, these are really nice, over engineered bottom parts I wish they were all pants personally but yeah and then you could remove this if you don't want this on it or and then you could also probably get away with modding this by putting a uh, barrel lock uh, cinch around there so it really cinches around your legs if you need them to and yeah, like I said, you could can conspicuously ankle carry, or if you're wearing that true to current issued combat uniform, you have those ankle pockets for cell phones or whatever. You could access your ankle combat pants, ankle pockets with this. So theoretically, even in the modern day, you could still access all your current issued com pockets. Although, if you're accessing these, do not have back pockets. So. 
that's the only drawback. But so they aren't combat pants because real current issue military combat pants, which I'll do a review on in the next few videos, have two, four, six, eight. I think eight pockets on them. These only really have four official, and then you theoretically, if you're wearing the other ones, you have eight and then four, so. 12, theoretically, if you're wearing pants underneath this or a combat. So. Um, yeah, so you can remove these or create your own. I would do that personally. It just hurts. It would hurt me to use this nice, even though this considered cheap bungee cord, uh, it just hurt me, I think, to use these. So I would probably end up replacing these with some paracord that's or stupid cheap shoelaces or, you know, buy a spool of... But, like, if you're going to resell value or just cool in the factor, you could also leave this one as it is and put a secondary one in for stirrups. But if you're going to be walking under branches and stuff or s s cobbling over rocks, you really want one bad piece of granite with a sharp edge to cut right through these. So I would use a cheap, cheap, uh, string or s bungee cord material or something on this instead of the original one. That's just me, but, yeah, so, alright, let's see here, we'll zip this up and I'll give you a, unfortunately all I can give you now is a uh, flat, I'm not too good at circumference math, so I'll just give you a flat based measurement of what flattened this leg cuff sizes, and that is seven and three fourths. So that's your length of, and then I guess I could give you like a, with a hole, worst case scenario, I would, this is kind of your crude circumference type of thing. You could do, a, you've got about seven inches of four. We'll give you, we'll just assume if your legs are like this, you've got about probably four and a half inches of circumference roughly so each pant leg can fit most you know cowboy boots or your worst footwear and as long as you put them on delicately I guarantee these will fit even your white bunny boots that are unusually large but yeah so you've got your these are also considered you what are they SK3O U Universal SK30 snaps. And then the snap head doesn't have a logo. But if you were wondering, these are. Uh, one fourth snaps. Fourth snaps. So they aren't your standard snaps like you see on most combat stuff like this is like sleep systems and whatever like uniform parts and they're different so if you're going to repair something you'd have to buy one fourth snaps so since these are made by a commercial contract versus government specs which i think these can be lenient more because they're considered special forces these aren't they don't have to follow the same protocol as military uniforms currently. So, that's what makes them nice. I mean, obviously, they probably had something they had to do. Because they're special forces and you can't have cheap materials. But, yeah, overall, these are pretty nice pants. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, you can either leave them in the comments. Or email me at wolfoutdoorreview at gmail.com. And if you enjoy this video, check out my channel. I do all sorts of videos. And you can like, comment, share, subscribe. All that would help. Yeah, so, um, like I said, you've got this weird inner material. If you're wondering, then, like, if you have problems with normal, thin, like, pants, um, if this, you've got about one and maybe two inch, roughly one and seven eighths to two inches, um, sized band where your waist would be. This is all the, it would evenly distribute pressure around your waist. And yeah, so I think I went over all the pockets and features of these. Um, like I said, the waist 
at work at max is uh, 32 on the size small regular 32 circumference and 32 inseam so 32 32 although it, these are technically an adjustable waist so if you, this waist could probably go down to as skinny as you possibly can get at 32 in at 32 inseam so yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video i tried to make it informal and useful and um Yes, As you can see here's what the uh, here's kind of like yeah what the uh, suspenders naturally do on your back, something like that, and I'll do a uh, 